Hi, I'm Erica Parker, and I thought I would just start by introducing myself. I'm new to YouTube. I am a real estate investor, a real estate agent, an entrepreneur, a lifestyle coach, a mom, a wife, a, a Houstonian. I love this city and I want to help people, so I thought I would just start giving y'all information and doing a lot of different videos about how to sell your house in different uh, markets in different ways and actually today we're going to actually talk about the black box techniques to selling your house fast and i know a lot of people probably look this up and they don't necessarily find what they're looking for so i thought i would kind of give you a whole gambit of ideas on how to sell your house fast and the different the different techniques and the different things that you might need to keep in mind when you're trying to sell fast so to start off you know i know that selling your house fast is actually really stressful and can cause a lot of anxiety so the whole point of this is try to alleviate some of that anxiety and and to educate you on what's coming down the pipe so first i you know i have some ideas of like trying to keep things in mind for you so i have i have named some of these techniques to kind of keep them in a forefront so number one is neat freak out yes freak out but what i'm what i mean by this is that i want you to spring clean like you're on steroids that's right, I want you to take that clown that Aunt Nell gave you, the little cookie jar clown that has the creepy smile, I want you to go and put that away. It's a, it, no one wants to see that when they're coming through, the, through your house because they're gonna freak out and they're not gonna want the house because it's creepy, the creepy smile clown. But one of the things I will suggest is that you get a storage unit. I know that it's, an, uh, it's another expense, but I highly recommend it. I think that you should take any bulky furniture that you have and put it in storage. Any knickknacks that you have need to be put away because you want your, your buyer that's coming through your house to be able to visualize themselves there. So all those knickknacks that are important to you, those trophies, those pictures, all of that box it up, put it in storage. When you move to your new house, unbox it, put it in anything, anywhere that you want. But for selling fast, I highly recommend that you get the storage unit. Also, the benefits of a storage unit are that people are gonna be looking in closets. They want storage, they want closet space, and if you have all of your clothes stuffed in the closet, or your vacuum and all your, all your cleaning supplies and you know all your coats stuffed in one tiny closet, it's gonna look like there's not a lot of room and there's not a lot of storage. So that, unit, that storage unit is gonna help with trying to make everything look bigger and more open and really highlight the, the good things about your property. And number two on that, on the neat freak out, is that uh, you need to depersonalize everything. I, I already kind of mentioned that, but really someone's not gonna be able to visualize themselves in the space if they see pictures of you and, as I said, trophies, because they're gonna feel like they're invading your space. They feel like they're invading someone else's space. So they're not gonna feel comfortable actually in the space. And so to really feel, for someone to really feel like they might love this space, they need to understand that, you know, and they can, they need to be able to visualize that they, their, their furniture in that area. And then finally, staging. And that is all encompassing. So I could talk for days on staging, but here's a couple of things that I will say. Um, you know, go ahead and uh, do any touch ups you need to do, any wall painting that you need to do to touch up any scuffs. 
Um, people, if you, if you haven't updated your kitchen in a while, you might look at possibly updating that if you're trying to get top dollar. If you're trying to sell fast, that may not be an issue. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But if you are trying to get top dollar, I highly recommend looking at your bathrooms and your kitchen to see if they're competitive in the area and you're trying to get that top dollar. Um, I would say really have all kind of, uh, I, I recommend a grayish. it's like a gray beige, but really make sure all your walls are neutral. Um, open up all your windows when you're having showings, turn on lights. I would, I would recommend uh, daylight LED lights because it really kind of lightens up the room and makes people feel like the it's it's a lot larger um, any dark drapes that you have i recommend taking those down and actually putting up white sheer drapes it's one of my favorite things to do um, actually put orchids and uh, more greenery and stuff i think white and green are really good in, in making people feel calm and feel like this is a good place for them to be so i highly recommend those if you have uh, maybe a punch of color here and there, um, any artwork that you have on the wall needs to be probably 60 to 66 inches, the center of it from the ground. So that's, it's, it ends up being about eye levels for, for most people. And so that's where the most pleasing spot is for, for artwork if you do have artwork on your walls. Um, and you know just uh, like i said paint is one of the cheapest things you can do um, any kind of doorknob that is rickety and needs to be tightened or replaced any light switches that have been broken that need to be replaced those things that are just that have been kind of being like hey i'll get to them but i haven't yet uh, you know go ahead and do those they're not actually that expensive but when a buyer comes in and sees them they're gonna sit there and they're gonna be like oh I got to do this and I have to do this and I need to do this and they're gonna start adding that up in their head and it's not gonna be you're, you're not gonna want that thought to be going through their head you want them to be thinking this is it this is what I want this is where I want to be and so any of those small things that you can take care of now are gonna be uh, the the best thing that you can do in the future so I want to say that you need to do a deep clean now I'm one that hates cleaning I absolutely hate it so I'm gonna hire the professional cleaners to come in and clean the baseboards and make it shine but if you're on a shoestring budget or you just don't feel that you want to spend the money there I, I it's okay elbow grease works just as well now I think that you do need to make sure that you vacuum all the all of the um, carpets I also recommend that you probably want to go get a rug doctor or something like that at the local home improvement store and do some carpet cleaning just to make it really look beautiful um, if you need to replace the carpet that's another thing but you know if you don't want to necessarily bring in a carpet cleaning company the rug doctor at a at a home improvement store you can rent them and it's it actually I've done it several times and it helps uh, really pull out a lot of those stains that you don't want to have showing to your potential buyer and you need to also make sure that you want to sweep you want to mop uh, probably do that twice a week if you're on in the middle of showings you don't want like your kids footprints to be showing and you you want to make sure as I said before you want to make sure you declutter so your kids throwing their their backpacks on the island or you have bottles that you just cleaned yes I'm a mom I know that you have bottles but if you have bottles that you just cleaned or you have mail that you've thrown on that island all of that stuff needs to be cleaned off and you really need to show and showcase all the best things about it and no one can see it if it's under all that clutter so make sure it's clean make sure that you really get that deep clean in all the bathrooms i want those to sparkle like the top of the chrysler building yes it is an annie reference for all of you that know annie i want you to use that elbow grease and i think that deep clean is one of the biggest things to make someone feel like they're at home and make themselves feel like 
there isn't someone else's house that you've just snuck in on. So that's, that's the last one of the new freak out. So number two is first impression versus lasting impression. You want your first impression, your curb appeal, to knock their socks off because what they feel is welcoming, is gonna, con is gonna continue that lasting impression throughout the house and then on into the rest of the day. So you want your curb appeal to speak to the buyer. Now that means you need to probably mow your, your yard at least once a week. You need to trim all those hedges back, make those bushes look really nice and, and groomed. Um, you want to make sure that you're, you have cleared off all the pathways. This is stuff that you probably already know, but in case you don't, or in case you might have forgotten what my, some of these things are, you, you want to clear off all the pathways, you want to sweep, you want to take out all the, the cobwebs that are around there, definitely take that power hose or power wash and get the uh, hornet's nests off of the building, off of your house. Um, you wanna, one of the big things I would suggest is going ahead and grabbing some flowers that are colorful. Um, Houston, I really recommend the Rio. It's something that I, I found at um, Home Depot. It's not very expensive, but it is actually a really great flower because it's really pretty. It's, it's, it has a lot of color and it's actually kind of really, it, I'm not very good at remembering to water. I'll be honest, my husband will tell you I have like a black thumb when it comes to anything that has to do with flowers and the Rio has like still lived. So I would recommend getting the Rio if you're like me. If you are a flower enthusiast, then go after it and plant as many as you want. That, but make sure it looks nice. But um, you know, color and that sort of thing in, is inviting. So um, I would say add that mulch everywhere. I think mulch is actually a pretty cheap way to make everything look healthier and more full of color. You can choose like red mulch or black mulch or even like a kind of a yellowy mulch. So it really kind of pops against the house and, and it really can make everything look and feel like it's fresh and, and that it's inviting. And then finally, there's anything that's broken you need to probably fix, any light fixtures that are broken, any light bulbs that are out there that need to be replaced get all of that fixed so that people can come in and feel like that you know the lighting is all correct and and everything and then finally the uh, front door um, if you have a painted door I suggest an updated coat of paint if it's, if it's kind of a dull color maybe change it get a little fun and funky if you want if it's allowed in and you have you don't have an HOA or if you do and it's allowed you know make sure you check with your HOA if you have like a wooden door, make sure, try and restain it. If it has a lot of scuffs on it, go ahead and wipe down all the windows and the doorknobs and everything so that it just feels like they're walking into a very friendly and inviting home. And one of the tricks I do whenever I'm taking professional pictures is I actually remove the window screens because it can cause the window screens sometimes look dingy and and can cause the house to look dingy because of that. So I actually recommend just keeping the window screens like somewhere else. But you know that's that's your decision. And if you want to put the window screens back on, that is fine. You know that's something that usually the inspector will point out that you need window screens. So make sure you have window screens. Don't throw them away because they're going to want them in the inspection. So but it's definitely something that I would recommend for pictures. Three is strategize to sell. Lee Bowman said, a vision without strategy is just an illusion. And really you need to know what, what your goal is. If your goal is to sell fast, then you really need to weigh the pros and cons of each of these following strategies when you're selling. Now you can hire an agent. I'm an agent. I can tell you that there are pros and cons to having an agent. The pros are they can list you on numerous websites. They have a, if they're a competent agent, they know the market, they know what things are selling in your neighborhood, around the corner. They, they know what to price you at and what to suggest on a price range. 
Um, they also know all the contracts, so they can negotiate those contracts with for you. Um, they also can get the professional photography done for you. They can do, they'll know traditional and digital marketing, hopefully. I would recommend that you uh, that you do interview multiple brokerages. I think one of the biggest things that people um, complain about their their um, agent is that they don't feel like they get any kind of communication. So whenever you do a listing presentation with uh, several different brokerages, uh, one of the big questions I would ask is how often do they communicate with you and how they commu how they plan to communicate with you. I also recommend that the following day after the listing presentation, you call them and just see if they pick up the phone because that's going to probably show you something. If they don't, then leave a message because it's going to show you if they, if they answer their phone and or if they return calls promptly because that could actually mean the difference between a buyer's agent giving an offer or not because the buyers may decide, okay, well, we can't a hold of their agent so let's just move on so let's make sure that you ask about the communication and in addition what they plan to do for marketing strategy now understand that if you're asking for a 1% or 2% commission then you're probably not going to get the full gambit of marketing strategies now you might get some but to get the full gambit, uh, it's gonna likely be 3% because that agent is having to put money out of their pocket to try and get you sold. So you've gotta understand that, you know, fifteen, eighteen hundred dollars is going into marketing and they're not necessarily going to see anything from it unless they sell. So they're hoping they're gonna put more money and more effort into selling if they have a 3% commission than if they have a 1% commission. Like, um, I know that a lot of people have complaints that they feel like their, their agent is just putting it on the MLS and that's it. And sometimes that's what you can expect from a commission that is so low. I do know some agents that will either give you staging for 3% or give you 2%, give you 1% off if you don't want staging done in your home. So there are ways, I mean, there's, there's different things, different perks, but you've got to understand that certain brokerages don't negotiate on their, on their commissions. And if you are really adamant on only giving 1%, 2%, then you might need to go to another commission, or sorry, another brokerage. Um, some of the cons of having a real estate agent is that you're going the traditional route and that can actually cause a lot more or that can actually take a little bit more or a lot more time to get sold because you're trying to find a traditional buyer. You're trying to find um, someone that is going to pay full market price and with that you're they're going to need to do inspections they're going to need to get approved as with the lender they're going to have probably other contingencies and um, you're going to have to pay that commission so there are some downsides to to uh, having a real estate agent now the next possibility is that you do uh, for sale by owner so you throw your house up on zillow now the things about that is that you really have to be confident in how you answer the phone. You're, you're, you do need to know that you're probably going to still have to pay a buyer's agent um, because, or if you're not willing to pay a buyer's agent, um, then the buyers actually may have to pay their agent 3% for finding the home and they may not be willing to go as high on the price or they may, it may just tell them, okay, no, I'm done. I'm not going to make an offer on this house if the seller's not willing to pay my agent for finding, you know, for, for putting us together. Um, also you need to have really good confidence in your negotiating skills and understanding the contracts and how they're written. Um, because if you're negotiating with a buyer's agent, you're considered as the seller. If you don't have a representation, you're considered a customer. And with that, it means that they can't give you any advice on 
how to interpret the contract or anything and they're using a Texas Real Estate Commission contract, so a TREC contract, and so they can't give you that advice on how to interpret it, so you have to be willing to either confident, be confident in your negotiating skills or you need to be able to hire an attorney to take a look at it, which may or may not be cheaper than having your own representation with an agent. Uh, three, you could actually do kind of a cross between an FBSO, which is a for sale by owner, and an agent. There are places out there that will you can pay a fee and you can post to their uh, to the MLS through them. They're they're kind of an agency, but um, a lot of your stuff is still handled by you. You don't you pay them a flat fee of like let's say seven dollars a day and each each month you pay it for that month so like maybe about two hundred dollars a month you're paying them to list your house on the mls the realtor.com zillow all of those big um places that people go to find houses that is where they're going to uh post to that um some of the places actually do some of these uh, firms uh, actually do give you a for sale sign to go in your yard uh, to call people. They they will send out people. They will send out a Supra, which is a box that other agents can use to get a key out of to do showings. They'll give you ways to approve showings or not approve showings, and they will um, they'll usually send out someone to do professional photos. Highly recommend the professional photos. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but um, that is what a a kind of hybrid agent for sale by owner looks like. And then finally, there's the unconventional ways. Now you could sell at auction. The uh, you do need to know that selling at auction is fast. You don't have to make any repairs, but you're likely going to sell for below market value, and you really don't get a choice on how how far below market value. I mean, you may be able to put somewhat of a minimum on there, but um, but it isn't highly recommended if you're trying to sell fast. There's other ways to do it. Um, there's iBuyers buyers out there. There's Zillow offers, OfferPad, Open Door. All of those are i buyers, and the thing to know about those is that they have a very specific criteria of what they are buying. And with COVID nineteen, those criterion have actually shrunk and really tightened up. So that may or may not be your answer. If you have a house that meets all their criteria, then um, then great, they'll make you an offer, but that may not be your own. That that may not be an option for a lot of you. Um, the next thing is that you could uh, sell to a developer. That only really uh, applies to anyone that has a teardown, and um, so it's not really for anyone that has a home that people would probably want to live in. Uh, and then finally, there's an investor. So Hestia home buyers can buy your house. You don't have to make repairs. You can close on whatever timeline that you want and they'll give you a fair offer. So that's a great way to go if you're trying to sell fast. Um, there are, you know, if, if you don't wanna make repairs, if you're trying to, uh, these are the, this is a situation whenever you're trying to sell fast because you need to pay taxes, you need to uh, uh, probate taxes, or you are looking at foreclosure. This is these, the option to sell to Hestia home buyers or another investor is gonna be one of your best bets on trying to close quickly. Four is the price is right. That's right. So the seller needs, a lot of sellers have said that it's, it's really hard to sell on their time frame. And one of the reasons why might be that they are not competitively priced. So highly recommend that you get a, a competitive market analysis and a range of where you think your house should sell at and you price it competitively. Now know that if you haven't gotten, you probably, when you first start, you should, you should have an idea of when you wanna drop the price. If you haven't, if it's two weeks from now, you haven't received any, reasonable offers we're going to drop the price in two weeks and 
from day one, you need to know that. So, and you need to know where you want to drop the price. So, so that you have that momentum and you have that movement. Um, just know that the longer that your house sits on the market, it's the less likely that it will actually sell at listing price. So you want to kind of still create that momentum, open houses, that sort of thing, but know that some of the other ide uh, ideas for trying to sell fast in the pricing way is to offer incentives like uh, cash at closing and or cash towards repairs if, there is, if you need new carpet or something like that or um, helping to buy down their interest rate if they have any, um, if, they, if the interest rates are high. Now, interest rates we all know right now are not very high, but that is still an option um, in a market where the interest rates are going back up. You can help to try and buy that down. So these are options for trying to sell fast in a pricing market. All right, guys, five. We are at five, five of seven, yay. So pictures worth a thousand words. I am talking to you who pulled up your smartphone and thought that you were a photographer all of a sudden and try and take pictures of your property. No, that's a big no-no. I highly recommend incurring the cost of getting a professional photographer that knows what they're doing out there because they can actually highlight certain things in your property that are the, the buying aspects people that that people want to see they can change out the lighting so that it makes it look light and bright even whenever it doesn't feel that way because in smartphones a lot of times the lighting is all messed up and so highly recommend having a professional photographer we live in an age where there are people getting on line to look at to look at properties before they ever step foot in the house. I think that it's actually like 93% of people find their houses online before they actually go and look at them. So, um, so highly recommend getting actual professional photography done. Uh, I said a picture is worth a thousand words. 35 pictures is worth 35,000 words. It's a, it's worth it. It is so worth it. And, on top of that, a 360 tour on my last house that I sold, I did a 360 tour and I think that that made the difference. I felt like they, they, the, uh, we listed it and it was sold in three days and having people be able to walk through my house basically and feel the feeling of my house and do a 360 de degree tour throughout the entire house and, and see the spacing and everything. Uh, I think that really helped people to, I, to identify what they wanted to feel or what they wanted to see and, and why they wanted to come to my house. I do recommend the 360 tour for anything that's priced higher in a neighborhood that's a little bit lower, anything that you're trying to get a competitive advantage if you're just kind of priced like everyone else and, um, and you're just trying to get a competitive advantage in that you, someone can walk through your house versus someone can just see pictures of one similar to them to yours in in your neighborhood and finally if you have a luxury home uh i i think it's essential if you have a luxury home it's essential to have the 3d tour because um people are likely going to be coming in uh depending on how uh, on on how high the the cost is of the luxury home uh, you might be marketing to people from out of state and they're going to want to probably walk through it before they ever make the actual trek down here to buy and so highly recommend the 360 tour for those three items or those three types of homes six words to live by that means you need to write the best type of listing description you can think of. Now, this is if you're selling it yourself, if you have hired an agent, they know what to do. You wanna highlight all the best features of your house. Use words like granite or sandstone or quartz or if, if that has to do with the countertops or you wanna use words like marble or wood look tile or um, luxury, luxury spa feel of the bath and ensuite master those are things that are going to highlight the benefits of your home so you really want to make sure that you that you mention those things now um 
some of the bigger ones that you might think of are like white shaker style cabinets. Those are really popular right now. Um, like I said, the spa like an eat in kitchen, a uh, large island, those are gonna be things that people want to hear because those are really popular right now. Um, also, maybe try and make the person feel like they're in your home. So, you know, you could say something like, uh, if you have a really nice fireplace, this is a great place to curl up with a, cu a cup of coffee and a good book on a cold day. You know, something like that, or you know, the whole spa, spa-like bathroom. This is a great place to run a bubble bath and unwind from the day. You know, something like that. That can also help someone visualize themselves doing that in that space. So words can help with that and so i highly recommend um thinking about how you're actually writing your listing to make it more personalized to the buyer finally number seven yay and number seven is be gumby that means be flexible uh, make sure that your schedule is not so rigid that if someone calls and wants a last minute showing that you can do that Make sure you keep things picked up. And you know, if you're cooking, like be flexible on having someone come and see the house maybe 30 minutes after you're done having dinner or so. So, cause a lot of times people are coming after work or they're wanting to see it after, during lunch because that's when their husband can come see it cause he's gonna be working late. You know, so be flexible. Um, I recommend to, having, to have an open house um, at least the first or second weekend of being on the market. That could bring a lot of buyers in. I also recommend that if you're selling it yourself, that you solicit information back from the buyers and feedback so that you know if you can kind of understand if you feel like your house is priced right, if there are obstacles to um, that a buyer is seeing that you maybe don't see that um, you might need to fix. So. Feedback is great, be flexible, and know that you know that's gonna be one of the main things at getting your house sold quickly. If you're not, if you're not only, if you're only gonna allow showings between you know, two and three in the afternoon, that's not gonna be an ideal time for pretty much anyone that is going into uh, an office right now. So, um, so definitely be Gumby. So thank you guys. I know this is kind of a long one, but I wanted to really talk about what things I feel like help make you sell a house faster. And if you are interested, if you um, like what I had to say, go ahead and subscribe below, like the, press the little thumbs up button until it turns blue. And you know, maybe make a comment below, let me know um, what your favorite staging tip I gave was.